always had to figure something out. Like if someone gave me something and it worked, why? How does it work? Can I make it better? What can I do? That's just how I always was. But that sort of got me started on the mechanic side of things. I'm Tricky and this is my 1972 Ford Capri Rory. So I started off as a normal mechanic and that didn't last long because it was just grease and oil changes and all the normal stuff. One day the boss was trying to undo something underneath the car and he was showing me and he slipped off with his crack bar and hit me in the mouth with a crack bar and put all my braces through my bottom lip. And I'm like, you know what, <laughs> this is me over. <laughs> like, I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> I'm no good under cars in that aspect. And I said, I gotta learn something about engines. Obviously it's changing now, the world, with laptops and computers, all that sort of stuff with tuning. But back then when I was learning, they started coming out with programs that you could, you know, analyze an engine, engine analyzer and all that sort of stuff. They didn't work. It always goes back to the old school technology. Uh, then I started doing some of the blown motor cylinder heads and we're always having a dabble in that, in that sort of industry. I couldn't just sit still, trial and error. They'd go to the track, they'd try something, they'd bust it up, it doesn't work. The computers couldn't simulate what was actually happening in a real world. You gotta port it, you gotta flow it, you gotta make sure it's right, airspeed, cross-sectional area, and then once you're happy with that, now copy it, make a set of heads and test it. And then you gotta say, okay, well that made too much peak torque and not enough peak horsepower. So that's sort of why I kept going down the avenue of trial, you know, try it, it doesn't work, try something else. Bullet roller cams that were done in 1994 or something and we used them. And that was a wow cam back then. Now it's just sort of a nice cam, but they always seem to come up trumps in power and they're always good. So even though you might have the latest technology and you've got steeper ramps and all the rest of it, it just breaks stuff because we're getting more savage on our, on our components. So then you've got to have bigger push rods, better valve springs, better retainers, better locks. So, but then everything breaks. So the old school stuff is still, still sort of hanging on, it's still working. And that's where the learning came, by actually having your own dyno in the shop so you learnt a lot from having everything at your fingertips by getting to see everything. And then we had a customer we built this car for, Joe Aura, and it was a beautiful car. He'd done a lot of work on it himself and done a real nice job. And one day he sort of just got to a point that he wanted to sell it and I said, well look, if we hear of a customer that wants it, we'll let you know. I think it was really, really nice. And he said, you might as well just buy it. So that's, that's how it come across. Me getting into a Ford, I think it ran 9.6 back then, but it was light. It was only like 26 or 2700 pounds, I think by memory. Put a stereo in it. I put um, insulation down under the seats. I even insulated the back wheel tubs, dynamated the doors. Put four mufflers on it instead of two. Just made it a bit more friendly for, you know, taking the family out. It's a small block Ford Windsor. It's 440 cubes, cubic inches. It has got Cali's crank, Cali's rods. It's got CP's pistons. Uh, then we step, we got ASR sump. It's got a good sump on it. Uh, it's got a custom camshaft. Ground here in Australia. I've had a, a Bullet, a Camtech, and a Crow. And I've tried a few different things. The cylinder heads on it are an Elderbrock, what they call a GV2. CNC ported my latest T-Rex program in them. Manifold is all a Wilson design. It's an Elderbrock manifold. It's been ported by Wilson to suit nitrous. The Wilson nitrous kit obviously has been done by them. I got a Pro System carburetor, the ice ignition. Total package makes about 885 naturally aspirated. And basically at the moment, it's, I've had a 320 shot on it. So we're looking around about, you know, 1200 horsepower. Engine, 1200 horsepower at the moment. I'll be honest with you, I was a drag racer. I am a drag racer. We were out cruising and there was an Evo and there was a Skyline, and I didn't even know what these things were back then. He come beside me, I thought, we'll give him a little bit of a stab. I stood in the throttle, and I think by memory, he put about 30 car lengths on me down the front straight. I was shocked. I said, what the hell was that? And I said, go tell him, <laughs> I want to race again. I had a workshop. I had the facility to make more power, figure it out, 
and how, why, I know these guys are four wheel drive, but how do I get the power down to the ground with a two wheel drive car? It's, it's good to lose. Losing will make you more competitive. If you keep winning, you lose that competitive nature. You, you get stagnant. I need competition to excel. Without any competition, I won't excel. There's no reason to go faster because there's no one pushing you. The more you get beaten, the more competitive you get, or it will show if you're a competitive person. I just like the challenge. It's not just the car. It's the driver, it's the tree. It's a competition. The four-wheel drive guys, yes, are faster, and they're willing to race where the other guys aren't. So it leaves you with, hey guys, here I am. Let's go and have some fun.